All right, we're ready to go here. We're gonna get a little nuts. The first thing that we're gonna do is join some tables together before we start visualizing or creating anything. And we haven't gone over this yet, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Like we said, we have three different tables. We have a player profiles table, a performance table, and a daily entry table. Now, I'm just gonna rename these tables a little bit. If you go to table design, table Adam, I have this name, TBL underscore daily. So I know which is which. Come here. Again, table design, TBL underscore perf for, for, for performance. And I'm going to name this one here table underscore profile or prof for profile. So the reason why I'm doing this is so I know which table is which, and it's a lot easier when you create calculations in tables or anywhere to call to call out the table's name within the formula than to go to the table and select everything in it. So I'm going to create a couple columns because what we don't have in this table, and this is kind of our our main table that we're going to use to take the information from and visualize elsewhere, is we're going to need to know your position or your cohort of interest so that your cohort of interest aligns with your name which aligns with your data right now your cohort of interest just aligns with your name and if we want to aggregate information by the cohort of interest excel probably won't won't know the data that's associated with your cohort of interest or your position if we are using that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a couple calculations to pull that in as well as your grades or your performance so let's just call this um, cohort of interest. It's going to be named the same thing. And the way that we do this is we need to use index match. And we just, there's a video out about this that I just put out not too long ago. So equals index. Now it's what I want to take. I want to take this cohort of interest thing. Table prof cohort of interest. That's right. It's from your profile. And I need to match it, match is another formula, to your name. So I need your name to match with, I'm going to type it in now, table underscore prof, code name, zero, exact match. So I want your cohort of interest to be right here. And the way that I do that is that I match whatever the, uh, cohort of interest is in the player table or the profile table with the code name that's in that table and align it with the code name that's here. And if I click enter, now I should have everyone's cohort of interest for every row. Great. Now, the next calculation that I'm going to do is I want to pull your grades in or your performance grades and uh, whatever you want to call it, those random numbers between 75 and 100. I'm going to use a slightly different formula here um, just because I like I like this one better. I'm going to do equals average or, yep, average ifs. Although we're taking average, what we're going to do is we're going to segregate it by date so it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going to average ifs, table, prof. Oh, nope, wrong table. Table, perf. Grade. So we want the average grade if table perf if the code name in table perf where the grade is is equal to this code name or your code name. And if we just do that, I'm just going to do that. You're going to have the same. So Taylor Jerry, you got an 80. That's your average. And if I go to another date where Sailor Jerry is, right here, it's going to be 80 again because we're not considering the date. What we actually want to do is we want to align your grade with the date that it was that it was taken. We essentially want to copy over the performance entry table into this one or join them together. So we want the average grade if the code name is this code name and table perf date the same as this date. Enter. I get a lot of errors, and that's where my if error comes in. But 
just to make sure, let's look in this performance entry table. The first date that we have performance data is 1-28. If I, if I filter this down, uh, I'm not gonna filter it down. If I scroll down to 128, there. All right, we see our data on that date, and then, oh, here we go again, 2-4. Go back to our performance entry table. The next date is 2-4. So we're doing great. And now with both of these formulae, I'm gonna apply the if error formula, and this is a good habit to get into. Well, it's a habit that I have, and um, I like it. So I'm gonna say, if there's an error with whatever is going on in here, make it blank, comma, blank. And we don't really have, I didn't see any errors in that one, but this one, we see all these div O's are dividing by zeros. And I'm gonna say if error, there's an error in this formula, comma, make it blank. All right, so now I, sh I should have no errors in here, which can affect calculations uh, when you're doing them or transposing them over to, to visualizations. So now that's great. We have some more calculated fields. We're joined, we joined the appropriate information with our tables together. Now let's start visualizing. I'm gonna cover the meat and potatoes of our visualization right here, where I'm just gonna call this data viz, starting from scratch. When we look at our planning, these are the two big things that we need to consider, these filters from a calculation standpoint. These things, the group filter and the athlete filter, are gonna be dictated by slicers, which as we'll find out, you don't need to worry about calculations um, for those. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the class table because that's the that's the big thing. That's kind of the biggest bucket item that, that, that we have on here. Um, and the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go to the player profiles because we have one profile name for each person. If I were to get it from a different sheet, there would be multiple names per person and I would have to remove the duplicates. And I'm gonna paste the names right in here. I copy them, I'm pasting them. I'm gonna put this in code name. And I'm just gonna select a bunch, I'm gonna go down to the end of the code names and just select a bunch of columns here and go insert table. My table has headers. I'm gonna check that because I just put in code name. That's my header. And now I have a table. Right now, all we have is code names. That's where we're starting out. And what we need to figure out is what order we want our metrics to be in. That's a big thing. And it's gonna take some time to think about, but let's talk about what's important to us. What we're showing here is we're showing class attendance, we're showing injury status, we're showing wellness, and we're showing exercise information. I guess it would probably make sense to display that information in the table as well. So when I go to our daily entry, all I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna copy these, these headers of all the things that, that might be relevant. And I'm just gonna paste them up here, just so I know what they are. Then I'm gonna add a row. This is, this is more or, or organizational. So maybe the first column that I want is attendance. And this is just these are just notes for me, right? I want attendance, I want injury status, I want whether or not the person exercised. Those are the three kind of not yes or no questions, but general categorical questions. And then maybe we'll get into some, some uh, readiness. Here, I'm just gonna add in another row to make it less convoluted. So let's go sleep quality, energy, stress. I'll put these in the order that, that, that they were in to begin with. Stress, sleep quality, energy. And then we have an overall readiness score. So we covered readiness. Now, if we go into exercise, maybe there's RPE, say exercise, duration, 
SRP, the calculated field that we have. So the plan is to show their attendance status here, their injury status here, and their exercise status or their most recent exercise status here based on the date that we have in our filter. So let me just put this date picker. We know that we need a date and we know that we need a past F, a past X days option. These are key things to consider when we're building this out. And that's that's all I'm going to go through for for this video. In the next one, it's going to be we're, we're going to start getting into some crazy stuff. So I hope that was helpful.